Hello, we are now going to look at epistasis using the LIN4 pathway as our test case. On the left are the single mutants that you see LIN4, 14, 28, 29, and now we're drawing in the double mutants that are doubles with the genes on the top in each column. As you can see, LIN4 doubles with LIN14 or 28 give wild type phenotypes, whereas any double with LIN29, which are circled here, gives a bag of worm phenotype. Thus, LIN29 is epistatic to all the genes that we are testing. So now looking at LIN14 and 28, we see that they are only epistatic to LIN4. Okay, so this epistasis allows us then to build a pathway. And we are going to place in the pathway LIN29 is most epistatic, LIN14 and 28 are, are second most, and LIN4 is least epistatic, so it's on the left. Now you've ordered this pathway, and you can see the way that it's ordered. And we are going to now test the relationship between them. First of all, LIN29, when it's lost, what happens? We know that it gives a bag of worms, so the phenotype of the um, mutant is the top phenotype. So in the absence of LIN29, there are no wild types, only the, and the um, bag of worms is not repressed. So now we would like to test, assign relationships to the next members by testing what the loss of function phenotype looks like. Remember, LIN29 will be active in the rest of these tests. In this test, we are looking at LIN14 or LIN28 loss. So is it does LIN14 or 28 activate or inactivate 29? So their loss produces wild type progeny, remember? Thus, LIN29 must be active when these two are missing. And the only way for this to happen is if a repression is relieved. So let's try the opposite first. Okay, so what if loss of LIN14 and 28 would thus inactivate LIN29 and give bag of worms. But we know that their progeny is wild, that they're wild type. So that must mean that LIN29 is repressed by the wild type function of LIN14 and 28. So we can now go and ask for the loss of LIN14 of LIN what it would do and would remove repression. And so it looks like it's a repressive arrow. So now we go to LIN4. So does LIN4 activate or inactivate LIN29? Okay, once again, we're going to take the same strategy. We're going to test whether the loss of LIN4 would be loss of an activation of LIN14 or 28. And this would mean that they would act as if they're nulls. But we know that the loss of LIN4 gives you a bag of worms phenotype which is not the loss of LIN14 or 28. Thus we know that LIN4, we think that LIN4 might be repressing LIN14 and 28. So loss of LIN4 would leave LIN24, 28, well, LIN14 and 28 active. LIN29 would be repressed. There would be no promotion of the wild type or repression of the bag of worms. And the phenotype would be bag of worms. And yes, this is what we see. So here's our, fi our final pathway.